If the man in the gray flannel fedora looks worried to you, he has reason to be. Tom Landry's Cowboys have lost two straight games, and with the undefeated Vikings, their opponents in today's game, the Cowboys are in danger of losing three straight for the first time since 1965. And at one and three, in danger of an early exit from contention in the suddenly competitive NFC East division. Certainly, the Dallas defense cannot be faulted, though peopled by what many consider neo-octogenarians, Doomsday has allowed a total of just two touchdowns in three games this season. The problem is on the much younger offensive unit. After scoring 24 points in their first game against Atlanta, the Cowboys total only 16 points in their next two losses to the Eagles and Giants. Last week, they averted a shutout in the last 11 seconds of their 14-6 loss to the Giants, a game in which Roger Staubach could not dodge six sacks while hurrying into three interceptions. If this man looks worried to you, he's not. That's Viking head coach Bud Grant's usual expression. Minnesota currently is 3-0 and and atop the NFC Central Division. But all is not well in Minnesota. They, too, have had problems putting points on the board. After a 32-point performance in their first game, the Vikings came back with 7 points against the Lions and 11 against the Bears. But Minnesota won both of those games because, once again, defense dominates for the Vikings. Last year, when they were runners-up in the Super Bowl chase, the Vikings had finally achieved equality of defense and offense, but for the new season, they have thus far reverted to their purple gang days. So two struggling offenses face two domineering defenses as the Minnesota Vikings meet the Dallas Cowboys in the NFL Game of the Week. This classic sports presentation is brought to you by Coca- In an effort to shake their offensive lethargy, the Cowboys opened against the Vikings with a wide-open attack on their very first play. Billy Joe Dupree took a tight end around for 20 yards, but when the Cowboys went to basics, they went nowhere. After two runs failed to secure first down, Staubach's third down pass was tipped, batted, balanced, and then dropped by Walt Garrison as Dallas was forced to punt. On Minnesota's first possession, Fran Tarkenton went off into number 44, Chuck Foreman, who in last year's playoff victory over Dallas gained over 100 yards rushing and would be deviled doomsday again today. Twice on third down plays, Foreman fought for first downs, but when some other Viking handled the ball, Dallas stiffened. After Jim Lash was driven further backward than he had gone forward, Dave Edwards nearly stole a Tarkenton sprint out. The pass could have been intercepted, but Edwards could not get two hands on the ball. On the next play, however, Viking wide receiver John Gilliam went Edwards one hand better and proved what couldn't be done with one hand could also be tough with two. Gilliam's drop cost the Vikings a first down and stalled Minnesota's first drive. And on a repeat, we can see that Gilliam had no excuse. He was wide open. He simply dropped the ball. On the Cowboys' next possession, Staubach stayed basic again, running four straight times. But the fifth straight was not a run at all. It was a strong play-action fake by Staubach, and it enabled Golden Richards to beat Viking safety Terry Brown, who was filling in for the injured Jeff Wright. Golden Richards was pure gold to Dallas fans, and his 58-yard connection with Staubach gave the Cowboys first blood. 11 minutes into the game, Dallas led 7-0. 
but control was beginning to slip away from the Cowboys, perhaps signaled on the kickoff following their score. Bruce Walton blasted Brent McClanahan, but he stayed up and was disappointed he didn't go farther despite Walton's big hit. On the next play, Cowboy nemesis Foreman snatched a targeted pass and picked up 29 yards to the Dallas 46. Then it was Foreman around left end to the Dallas 35. But Tarkenton again strayed from the hot man, and Gilliam again let him down, going high, getting both hands on the ball, but again failing to hold on. Though he had been well covered, Gilliam had nearly burned the Dallas secondary a second time. But the Cowboys were still alive, and after Minnesota settled for a field goal, Dallas led 7-3. At the top of the second quarter, Dallas made a mistake that would cost them the lead when linebacker Amos Martin stepped in and stole Staubach's pass intended for Drew Pearson. But Minnesota almost gave the ball right back when Tarkenton made like Oklahoma, then butchered a pitch out. Stu Voigt saved the ball, and rather than dally any longer, Tarkenton went to, who else, Chuck Foreman. Sixty-six yards later, Minnesota led 10-7. Dallas was stricken by the sudden score, but it was going to get worse. Just three plays after Minnesota took the lead, Staubach stumbled again. Another look at the play from our end zone camera shows the pattern just as Staubach saw it. Staubach saw an open Drew Pearson, but under through and Nate Wright stepped in and intercepted on the Dallas 21. But Minnesota could not punch it over as Mel Renfro slashed Lash on a post pattern forcing an incompletion. Minnesota again settled for Fred Cox field goal and led 13-7. The intricate Dallas offense again failed to mesh gears on the first play of their next possession. But from the Cowboy 33, Calvin Hill began to bang. Though Hill and several other Cowboys have defected to the WFL, and there was some question as to how hard lame duck players would perform while playing out the string with their old teams, Calvin Hill left no room for doubt. Hill never ran harder as Dallas reached the Viking 41. But there, Staubach was dumped, losing nine and bringing up third and 17. Still, Staubach very nearly got it when Richards beat second-year man Jackie Wallace, but could not get pointed in the right direction. Dallas got one more good shot to score when a punt left Minnesota on their own six. Jethro Pugh pushed it back to the five, and Bob Lilly further to the four. Third and 12 on their own four with still over two minutes in the half. Good field position was in the offing, if Dallas could hold. But Tarkenton burned Dallas with a 22-yard completion to Stu Voigt. Another look shows Franz cool as he steps into the end zone, refuses to panic, and seeks his secondary receivers. By finding Voigt, the Vikings were able to avoid punting from their own end zone, and they kept the ball for the rest of the half, preserving their lead at 13-7. Network. On the opening series of the second half, Dallas linebacker D.D. Lewis caught Fran Tarkenton rolling right and threw him for an 11-yard loss that brought about a third and 19 situation. Long yardage was needed. On a play designed for first down, Jim Lash bobbled the catch and was one yard short of the needed 19, so Minnesota gave up the football. Lash, a second-year player from Northwestern, has replaced Carol Dale on the Vikings. <laughs> 
For Dallas, Roger Staubach faked the handoff and rolled right. But number 60, Roy Winston, poured in to trap him for a loss. Winston, along with Wally Hilgenberg at the outside backers, comprise over 24 years of NFL experience. The man in the middle in Minnesota's great trio of linebackers is young Jeff Seaman, who replaced Lonnie Warwick two years ago. Now, with a third and long, Staubach tried long for Drew Pearson, who seemed to have the ball, but it was literally stolen by Nate Wright. Minnesota immediately tried to cash in with a play that went Tarkenton to Foreman to Gilliam back to Tarkenton to Lash. The play was successful but not for the big yardage for which it was designed. It was kind of a moral victory for Dallas's defense. But a few plays later, Tarkenton stood behind an impenetrable wall and had time to find John Holland at the left sideline for a gain of 19 yards and a second straight first down. Holland, a rookie from Tennessee State, beat veteran Mel Renfro. A first round draft pick, Holland is so talented, he is expected to ease the loss of John Gilliam to the WFL next year. After Holland's catch, Chuck Foreman ran the ball three straight times, then from the 13, made the play of the day, reaching over D.D. Lewis to steal a touchdown. This is what makes Foreman so valuable to the Vikes. Besides his great running ability, a talent that ranks him first in his conference so far this year, last year's NFC Rookie of the Year has the knack for making the big play, as evidenced by his six touchdowns, tops in the entire NFL. The score was now Minnesota 20, Dallas 7, and the struggling Cowboys were in trouble. A third straight loss seemed unavoidable. The ensuing kickoff demonstrates the influence of the new rules as Fred Cox's angle kick bounced high enough for his teammates to blanket Dallas's Charlie Young. Despite the fact that Young was well covered because the kick was from the 35, not the 40, the Cowboys had the ball at their own 25, relatively good field position. However, Dallas immediately gave the ball right back as Terry Brown cut in front of Drew Pearson for the Vikings' fourth interception of the game. For Staubach, it was now seven interceptions in the last two games. One has to look no further when pondering the turn in Cowboy fortunes this year. Tarkenton quickly went for the coup de grace, and with a pinpoint perfect pass, nearly had it. It was the only ball thrown to John Holland that the gifted rookie would fail to catch, but he'll probably remember this one the most. A repeat of this diffused bomb shows just how accurate Tarkenton was. Holland had the ball, but was slightly influenced by number 43, Cliff Harris, at the goal line. Dallas regained possession now as the half was winding down. Number 21 rookie Doug Dennison got around Roy Winston down the sideline for first down. Dallas picked up another on the next play as Calvin Hill went up the middle for 14. Hill running beautifully would gain 95 yards today and his backup, the second leading runner in the National Conference, Robert Newhouse, never touched the ball at all. On Hill's run, watch the other setback, Walt Garrison, block number 81, Carl Eller, to help clear out the right side. But here, the Texans' momentum was halted as the Vikings converged on Walt Garrison. The Dallas attack had failed, but now came one of the key plays of this football game, and it was not unexpectedly the result of the always vital battle between the special teams. The Vikes suicide squad nearly blocked Marv Bateman's kick, but his skied punt gave his team time to cover, and number 46, Mark Washington, spiked the ball backwards to Charlie Young. The ball was down on the Minnesota one-yard line, and the Vikes were in a very large hole. Dallas's special teams clearly won that skirmish and quickly won another. When unable to extricate themselves from the shadows of their goal line, Minnesota kicked with the league's worst-ranking punter, Mike Eyscheid. Though number 43, Cliff Harris, was hit immediately, Dallas had regained possession at the start of the fourth quarter and had good position at the Viking 39. Due to the exchange of punts, the momentum was going the Cowboys' way now, and Staubach kept it so, with a cross-court pass over the middle to workhorse Calvin Hill. Yeah. 
Dallas had 22 yards and a first down. Four plays later from the Viking five, Staubach found reliable Walt Garrison, and the Cowboys were back in the ball game, 20 to 14. Another look shows Garrison just did sneak into the corner of the end zone while number 50, Jeff Seaman, was screened out of the play. With the game slipping away and 58,000 Texans screaming for more, Fran Tarkenton came out throwing. The gifted rookie, John Holland, took two passes for 36 yards to put his team in cowboy territory. Then came a decisive play. John Gilliam saw only white jerseys, so he cut back against the grain for a stunning run. But the Norsemen were called for clipping. The play was called back, and Mike Eyshide punted. His kick this time went only 11 yards. So again, with the gift of good field position given him by the Vikings kicking game, Staubach went to the air. Drew Pearson, the conference's leading receiver, made his first and only catch of the day for a 28-yard advance. As if to prove things were definitely going their way, the Cowboys' hill fumbled, and Bob Hayes, a man not known for his adhesive hands, gobbled it in for first down as well as a recovery. Nothing could stop Dallas now, and nothing did, as from the eight, Calvin Hill roared into the end zone for the touchdown. The Dallas Cowboys had scored two touchdowns in nine minutes to tie the game, and the Cowboys' partisans showed their appreciation. 57,847 were witnessing the return of the brand of excitement they were accustomed to. Dallas, a stumbling team that badly needed a lift, had gotten one with two consecutive series of offensive excellence. And as the not-so-automatic extra point was successfully kicked to break the tie, it appeared that the Cowboys' revenge for their loss to the Vikings in last year's championship was almost complete. Twenty-one twenty, and only two and a half minutes remain. On the first play, a tremendous rush by Harvey Martin and Too Tall Jones devastated Tarkenton. With lightning striking, the Vikings' winning streak appeared certain to end. In a third and six must situation, Tarkenton coolly found Ed Marinaro for seven yards and a first down. But then, lightning struck again in the form of a blitz from Benny Barnes. Now, with 64 seconds left, came another crucial play, and this one went for the Vikings. With a third and 12, Chuck Foreman took a swing pass, got 11 yards, and was hit and fumbled. But he recovered it himself for an additional six yards and a first down. A repeat of this key play shows Foreman's customary style of one-handing the ball betrayed him. But had he not fumbled, he most likely wouldn't have made the first down. Such are the ironies of football. Now, with a new life and 55 seconds to go, Tarkenton leisurely strolled right, dumped the ball to sure-handed Ed Marinaro, who rambled for a 20-yard pickup of very valuable Dallas real estate.
23 seconds now, and from the 17, Tarkenton had Gilliam free, but the catch was out of the end zone. After running play went nowhere, and with just four seconds showing on the clock, it came down to 27 yards and Fred Cox's foot, an irony because of the sporadic Viking kicking game for much of the day. For Minnesota, it was a sweet fourth straight victory to remain unbeaten. For Dallas, a bitter heartbreaker and an unprecedented third straight loss.